H is the ortho center. And we draw a triangle BHC and we draw the internal and external bisector. So I'll draw this and then I'll draw the perpendicular. Okay, so we wanna see, we get four points of intersection. So yeah, let me um, draw the whole line AC. Okay, so, okay. so this, the external, so this is D and E. Oh no, that's the internal bisector. So, so this is D and E. Uh, this is uh, F and G. And we wanna show that those three circles concur. This one looks like, this one might be easy. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I wouldn't say that. He wouldn't say that just yet. <laughs> Axial circles are a hard thing to prove. All right. So like when you have problems where you need to prove that some circles are tangent and you don't have the tangency point, or in this case, coaxiality, and you don't have any of the points they will concur, those things are hard to prove. Okay. Usually. So yeah, maybe this one is a little tricky. So I think it might be best to draw these two circles and then we wanna show that this is cyclic. So AFIG. Um, so yeah, how do we use that H is the ortho center? That might be like the trick to this. Oh, actually, I agree that this is not very hard, probably. Because, oh, yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, since I should be the Q point, that can be proved very easily if we take I as the intersection of ADE and ABC, those circles. Okay, so are you saying, like, angle AIH is 90 degrees? Uh, yeah. Okay. Probably actually by the same argument we can get for the circle AFG. Oh. So, okay, so draw in the, uh, the altitudes. Okay. The, triangle, the feet of altitudes. All right. Oops, sorry. Then we can prove, okay, define I as the intersection of uh the circumcircle of a the diameter h so that circumcircle okay yeah so we can proceed by in two ways i think uh we can prove that uh, a i d e is cyclic by power ratio lemma okay or we can do uh spiral similarity yeah so like basically triangle A J B is similar to triangle A K E or I I J B and I K E are similar. Yeah. Basically everything that is needed is to prove that D J or D B is E K or E C, but that is obvious by uh angle bisector theorem. Okay. So let's see. So 
So we have, um, so basically DJ over KE is what you said. Uh, DJ over DB is EK over EC. Is EK over EC. Okay. Um, I was thinking of it. So that works. Yeah, but basically we know that IJB is similar to IKC. And then we could show that this ratio is equal to this ratio uh, by the angle bisector theorem. So yeah, that so, and so that that works. And, and then we could probably do something similar with the external y sector. Yeah, it is the same. The same argument. Okay. So I'll try to write this one up quickly. So let J and K be the phi of the B and C altitudes. And then let A, J, H, K. Meet A, B, C at I. Um, then by its spiral similarity, I, J, B is similar to I, K, C. Right. And we also have JD over DB um, is equal to HJ over HB, which is equal to um, HK over HC. Which is equal to KE over EC. So then um, actually I'll flip these. So well with D corresponding to E. to the ratios above. And then, so that means IJB is similar to IKE. And so that means by a spiral similarity at I, IB, KE is cyclic. We have I, B, K, E. There we go. And then we can use the same argument um, to show IAFJ because uh, that would be the same as saying, showing that IAG is similar to IFJ. Um, but GA over GK. Oh, wait, hold on a second. So this is that. GK or GC is uh, HK or HC. Angle bisector theorem again. 
Okay, GK over GC is, is HK over HC. So G and F are corresponding again. So this is by the external angle bisector theorem. So it's HK over HC, which is HJ over HB. Um, and that is uh, FJ over FB. And then I'll just say by a similar argument to above, we have I, I, Sorry, um, I F A G is cyclic. Or yeah, that's right. This should be I D A E. Um, so then those three circles can occur at I. All right. All right, so we'll move on to the next one. So yeah, this one was easier. Oh, this one uses a harmonic quadrilateral. Let's see, let me check the other ones. This one I think is a little tricky. Um, I'm gonna try this one. So we have a triangle inscribed in a circle O. And M is the midpoint of BC. And N is the midpoint of AM. And then we draw the circle with center M and radius MA. Oops. Or passing through it. A and it intersects O at G. And then we see where it intersects the sides. So G and then X, Y, Z. What if I make, make it a flatter triangle like that? I think that might be a little better. Um, So B, C, at X, C, A, at Y, and A, B, at Z. And then we want to show M, G, Y, Z, and A, N, X concur. That's very, wait, that's not true. Let's see, did I make a mistake somewhere? So 
the triangle describing a circle O, M is the midpoint of BC, N is the midpoint of AM. The circle with center M through A, it intersects O at G, and then BC at X, CA at Y, AB at Z. We want to show MG. Yeah, that doesn't look true. Um, did I do something wrong? I, I think I, I think there were a couple solutions to this. Um, I could I could try to look at this problem. Let me see. Uh, it's not this one. Not this one. It should be this problem. Here's a picture. Oh, it's the circle with diameter MA, not the circle. Okay. So this, this should be the circle with diameter MA. All right. Or at least it looked like that from the picture. So yeah, the intersection with BC is just the altitude. Um, how, do I make, how do I, I want it to be clear, like, I think that looks okay. So, okay, so this is X. And then Y, Z, and then this is G. We want to show MG, YZ, and NX concur. Let me let me see if I can draw this so that. Okay, yeah, it's it's always gonna be it's never gonna be on the segment NX, I don't think. Okay. If I make this a really tall triangle, then oh oh yeah, these should always intersect. They'll just intersect really close. Okay, so I want to make it a flat triangle, basically. Okay. So I mean, we know a we know a x m is a right triangle, and we know that this is isosceles. Uh, it could label the point of intersection here. This looks a little like the IMO problem recently, although I think it looks easier. Problem four. Yeah, problem G4. Oh, G4, okay. So, okay. So I guess it's probably worth drawing these right angles. Looks like Pascal kind of, doesn't it? Like on A, I'm, I'm bad at Pascal, but uh, what do we get if we do it on like G, A, Z, M, Y, something? So 
So GM and YZ. Um, So G A Z M Y Like what if we draw like a Z prime or something? So then we would have like a y. So that would lie on it. I don't know if that helps much, but So N, B, and E are collinear. Uh, we want to show X, N, and E are collinear. Or X, D, and E. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna erase that for now. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I'd like to try to use, let's see, how can we use projective ge geometry? So, I wonder if so, if I could find ZD over BY using this definition of B, and then I could define B the other way, like where XN intersects it, and then show that it's the same ratio. Um, I have, I have one idea. Yeah, so I wonder if it's if you could solve it that way. Um, okay, so if I let's say I define this point here, I have the cross ratio z e d y. Uh, I project through a. I get b c m. But then I'd have to do a d. So yeah, I'm not sure.
Or I could say Z, you could say Z D Y infinity is B M C. And then I'd have to draw the tangent. And then Yeah, there, I feel like there has to be some kind of projective bash that works. Yeah, you can project A through those points. Um, oh, you could also project this point through those. So yeah, we kind of like that. A, D, B, Y, and C, Z concur. Oh, really? A, B, B, Y, and C, Z. Interesting. Is that by Pascal or? Don't know why. Just okay. not. Also, could you just make this triangle acute? Okay. So, yeah, if it's acute. Um, it is just a bug in GeoGebra. G should be uh, a normal point. Okay. Uh, oops. Okay, let's think about this. So, yeah, G should just be this point. Yeah. And then G1, I should be able to hide. Okay. So MG. So do you notice uh, that G is the Q point of ABC? Oh, by, by the same argument that we were saying for the last problem? Well, kind of. I mean, yeah, this is well known. So oh, it's just really... good. angle AGM is 90 and the orthocenter, yeah, it's it's well known, yeah. So you should uh, draw in the orthocenter. Okay. All right. And then I can draw that circle. And I can draw the feet of the altitudes.
So yeah, it's like the same idea as the last problem, right? It is similar. Okay. Like we wanna show that BZ over ZF is CY over YE. Um, and that's true because BZ equals ZF and CY equals YE. So yeah, it's, yeah. or the power ratio lemma. Yeah, all of them are the same idea. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it's past, okay. So by Pascal's theorem, so these two can correct B. Basically, we want to show G, H, and M are. Oh, actually, we know we know G, H, and M are collinear. Yeah, it's well known. Uh, we just want to show it passes through. So we want to show these all concur. So. I'm not sure the best way to do this. So what we could do is we could, we could draw this and then we could try to calculate ZI over IY. And then we could draw this one and try to calculate the same thing. All right. Or yeah, we could try to find Z, I, B, Y by projecting through M. Uh, that's Z, Y, G, A. And that's the same as B, C, well, okay, Z, Y, G, A. And then we could draw this. Sorry, let, let me just think about it this way. Can we find Z, I, D, Y this way? Um, well, we could project on, yeah, what do we project through? Yeah, can we like project through the center? Okay, so like when I take Z, I, D, Y and I project through N, so X and M come out nicely, but Z and Y, I don't know. So let me do it the other way, just for a sec. So here I can find Z, I, B, Y is Z, G, A, Y. 
I do it this way. Let XI uh, intersect circle with diameter M. Okay. One thing we want to show is that Z X prime Y M is harmonic. Okay. I'm not sure if this is obvious. So, Uh, yeah, because we can project through A onto BC. So if you, um, that goes to BCM infinity. So yeah, that's harmonic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, we then want to show that uh, GX prime, ZY and BC are concurrent. That is equivalent to the problem. Uh, GX prime, ZY and BC? Yes. Yeah. Wait, how is that equivalent? Sorry. It is not uh, so obvious, but you can get that uh, with projections. Okay. So I show these three concur. They do. Okay. All right. I'm just going to move it back for a sec. So yeah, this is a rectangle. So yeah, maybe like like the way I solved the IMO problem, maybe we can project through a point not on the circle. So 
we know that x prime z m y is harmonic. If we project those through D, we get a y z, then we'd have to have some point down here. Um, anything special about that point? Not that I see right now. So I think I have an idea for a solution that's kind of messy. So like Z, uh, the cross ratio Z, I, D, Y, like we can write it in terms of the signs of these angles, like Z and I, I and D and D and Y, right? And those are all like computable because like angle Z and I is twice angle Z and B, which is like 90 minus B. So, so like we could calculate this cross ratio of ZIDY. And then if we define like an I prime, like this, then we could calculate a cross ratio by projecting through M onto this circle. So it'd be ZYAG. Um, and How would we do that? Sorry, then we can project that down. Uh, I think I have a solution to this problem, so okay. it's necessary. Okay. So basically, G, Z, X, Y is also harmonic. Okay. That is, let's say, well known. Okay. And we know that uh x prime z m y is harmonic yes and then we can uh project through i just like in that i'm of shortness problem okay that intersection m i and those three points are harmonic that's it so this is a g i and m have to be collinear and so that basically solves it yeah and do we even need, so I, I guess we just kind of use point H to, to show, help show that that's our model. Um, okay, so. H is there so we can say uh, a G, Z, X, Y is harmonic well known. Okay. Um, so let, let me think, G, Z, X, Y. Um, you can, for example, project through A. Uh, on the BC, right? Yeah. So we get BXC. Yeah, so these, th those are a harmonic bundle. Um, Because because A, G, E, F, and B, C concur. That's how you know it's harmonic. Unless there's another way. But... Mm, just a minute. Mm. I may have a, a, like... Is this well known, actually? I, I'm not sure. Because I think I may have a like mixed some things. Okay. It is like well known that GF 
H E is harmonic or something like that. Okay. I'll just write down the outline of the idea right now. So um, looks like. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can just project in, it is okay. Okay, so first uh, let X, um, so yeah, thanks for joining. Um, are you from Greece? I'm just trying to tell from the, the letters. Um, okay, so let XX prime be a diameter of that circle. Ah, thanks for joining. So let XX prime be um, a diameter of the circle AXM. All right, and so first we have, we can try to show that X prime Z M Y is harmonic, because if we project through A, um, then we would get B C M infinity. So, um, so I'll say Z M Y X prime. Is that right? No, Z M Y X prime. That's going to be equal to B. I'll say Z Y. Let me write it like that. Z Y M. Z Y M X prime. All right. And that will be B, C, M, and then the point at infinity. And that is negative one. So that means that, well, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. And then they, so basically we could project these four points um C Y M X prime. And you were also saying A um oh Constantinitis. Now now I now I recognize who you are. Okay. So um so the other one you were saying harmonic is A, I think it's A G Z Y, was that right? Uh Harmonic is G Z X Y. G Z X Y. Okay. Uh, hey, Sriyansh, thanks for joining. Um, so, yeah, so if we project those through I, so, so G Z X Y is harmonic. I'll just say for now that's well known. So, All right. But proof of that isn't hard at all. You can just write it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's all right. Yeah, a lot of people have been busy lately. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you having on. So yeah, thanks. All right. Um, so then projecting through I. Um, your eye onto the circle AMX. And we have um, GZXY 
uh, is equal to it's going to be GI intersect MX. And then Z will get a Y. And X will go to X prime. And Y will go back to X. Is that right? Let's see. Now Y will go to Z, sorry. So yeah, I did these in a, a little different order, um, but I think this should equal, um, like that. Let's see if this fixes it. I think I need to do a double backslash. See what that does. There we go. So this means that M is equal to GI intersect AMX. And that means that mg uh, yz and nx concur at i. So yeah, let me define i in the initial problem. And then, yeah, we can try to prove this. So let, so there's a couple of things I didn't prove yet. So I'll, I'll write them. So let zy intersect xn at i. And let's try to prove this, this statement right here. So um, uh, uh, oh, and, and we want to show that um, okay, so we, we have the circle diameter MA. So so basically a angle AGM is 90. And it's also well known that angle AGH is 90. Well, well, actually that's obvious. So GH and M are collinear. So, um, so I'll say let E and F be feet of the altitudes as shown and So um, let, let the circle, I'll say an H the orthocenter. And let A, F, H, E so I'll say so we, we know angle A, G, M is 90 and so that means that I'll say I'll do it this way Um, G prime, and then angle uh, A G prime H equals angle A G M, which is 90. Um, well, it, yeah, it's well known that G H and M, so yeah, it's well known that G H prime and G prime H and M are collinear. Yeah. Okay. 
So this means that G prime equals G. Um, okay. And so this, we wanted to try to prove this, right? G, X, G, Z, X, Y is harmonic. Um, that we can project through A, like he said. Um, Um, I'll just I'll just say well known by projecting through A. Because once we know that, once we do that. So so it's it's that true. And it's because A, G, F, E, and B C concur. I'm gonna move on to the next one, but this was a, yeah, I like how we project through a point not on the circle. That's kind of a, this is another good application of that idea. All right, so let's see what other problems we could solve. We have just a half hour left. Um, all right, oh, we, we, you wanna go back to this one? Let's do some other. Uh, uh, another one? Okay. Um, let's try this one. So we have a triangle ABC uh, within center I. All right, and then we reflect I over BC. I prime and H is the, oh, we've done a lot of problems with the ortho center of BIC, I think. Um, I feel like there's a lot of well-known things about that, right? So H, is the ortho center of that. Um, and then P is the midpoint of arc BC not containing A. We wanna show AI prime. Oh, I, I think this is kind of well known actually. Let's see. Actually, I'm not sure. We want to show, so this is going to be P. And we want to show AI prime is parallel to HP. All right. So it's probably worth drawing this point. One sec, I'll be right back. Thank you. 
All right, I'm back. Uh, H, B, I prime, C are cyclic. Yes, that's a good point. Because we know the reflection of the ortho center lies on the circumcircle. Um, and there's some other property too, I think, with H. So I think it's like if you form a parallelogram, maybe like H B H prime C, um, then there's some property like that. I wonder, let me do that. So I think I've seen this before. So if I reflect H over E, so I'm gonna have to make this, oops. Might have to shrink the diagram a little bit, but. I wonder if H prime A and I are collinear, just because I think I've seen this before. So there's H prime, and yeah, H prime lies on AI. Let's see. Add the A midline of triangle ABC. It's the polar of H with respect to I, okay. So this should be the polar of H. That's interesting. Um, I think it's a well-known fact that H prime lies on AI. And I think we've proven it before in the session. Um, so FG is the polar. And once we know that, so this is a parallelogram. Okay, so really we wanna show AI over IP is II prime over IH. Um, So, a, so IP, we kind of have a handle on. So this I we know- we should get rid of point H and take the midpoint of AH instead. The midpoint of AH? IH. Oh, okay. Then we get rid of uh, I prime. And we want to show that AJ I mean, AD is parallel to JP. AD is parallel to JP. Yeah, okay, that's probably an easier way to do it. Yeah, so, and we know JI is, so yeah, if we draw the center of the circle. Okay, so I'll delete H prime. I don't think we, I think it's interesting that it lies on AI, but I don't know if it'll help with this problem, right? So I'm gonna delete it for now. Um, let's draw the center of this circle. Yeah, I'm gonna make this diagram look a little better in just a second. So, JI is equal to OE.
Let me delete. I think that's okay. It almost looks like the circles are tangent. So let me move it around a little bit. Let's go FG. It's kind of interesting that it's the polar of H. So yeah, you're saying we could get rid of I prime and we could just want to show AJ, PJ is parallel to AB, right? Oh, FG being the polar. So yeah, I'll get rid of this. So I'm gonna add it later, add it back later. But for the time being, basically we wanna show AB is parallel to PJ. That's what you're saying, right? So DI over IJ, uh, that's DI over OE. Oh, I've sold it. Okay. Uh, you can get rid of the midline okay. and keep the H. All right. So we want to show that uh, AD is parallel to JP. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is equivalent to showing that AI or ID is IP or IJ. Yes. And drawing the uh, tangent of insert tangency point of in circle to AB. Okay. Then uh, ID over IA is IF over IA. Right. And uh, IJ over IP, that is equal to uh, PE over PB, since uh, IP is PB, and PE is equal to IJ, since uh, uh, it is the, like, I think it, uh, P is the circumcenter or something. Yeah, P, P is the circumcenter of BIC. And so the yeah. distance from the circumcenter to the side is, is half the distance from the orthocenter to that vertex. Yeah. And then it is just obvious that uh, BPE is similar to AFI, and that's it. Ah, okay. So, yeah, this is a quick one. So, I'll write it up. Um, okay, so yeah, let's, let's unhide stuff I hid. Get this, this, and this, and this. Yeah, actually we don't need that, okay. So let J be the midpoint of IH. Okay, so um, we, we, we have AI or PI over IB um, is equal to PB, or sorry, PI over IJ. So P, so we have the in center, X center lemma, uh, P, is the circumcenter of EIC. 
And that means that PE is equal to IJ. Or, or PE is equal to, yeah, IJ, that's well known. And once we have that, um, so PI over um, IJ is equal to PE over PD, or, or the other way. Okay. And then we want AI over ID. And that's just AI over IF. That's equal to PB over PE since triangle PBE is similar to triangle uh, AI, AIF. And that means that AD is parallel to PJ. Well, well actually we could just say that, that means that these two are similar. So, so that means that um, AI over 2IB is equal to PB over 2PE, which means that AI over II prime is equal to PB over um, AI over II prime is equal to uh, PI um, over IH, sorry, PI over IH. Actually, let me do it like this. This should be two PI over I. PI over two IJ, which means that AI prime is parallel to HP. All right. So we have a couple minutes left, um, about 15 minutes. Let's see, I think, was there one other problem that I had besides the one we didn't solve yet? Oh, this one. You wanna try this one or go back to the first one? Let's do this one. Okay. So we have a harmonic quadrilateral. Um, So I'm going to draw the two tangents at B and C. All right. And then we draw the midpoints of B, C, and E, F. So really we want, I don't know, call this X. So this is D e, and then we draw a circle passing, oops, circle passing through B and C. So this should be E and this should be um, let me move things around a little bit. So that'll be E, this will be F. And then we draw the midpoints of B, C, and E, F. So 
those are M and N. It's kind of obvious that N lies on the semedian because his EF is anti EF is anti parallel to BC. So N is going to lie on the semedian. And we want to show ABC, AEF, and BMN are concurrent. All right. So we have this, and we have this. Oh, is this just some like spiral similarity or something? Let's see. Inversion about A should work. Okay. So let's think about that. If we invert about A, so I guess with arbitrary radius, It probably meant uh, an inversion that fixes uh, BFEC. Okay. So how do I find the radius? Okay, so I wanna invert. So AE times AC, the square root of that is, okay. So I could create, um, yeah, let me, let me try to draw that. So, you could do it like this. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to try to use GeoGebra to do the inversion. And here's my plan. I'm going to take a, just a little bit to draw this. So this, this should be the, the circle that I'm inverting about in GeoGebra. Uh, this circle. So let me hide everything I just did. Okay. So if I invert about this circle, it's going to fix BFEC. Oh, I solved it. We don't need inversion. Oh, really? Yeah, it is on angle trace plus a median theorem. Okay. So, so how did you do it? Okay, so you can uh, erase uh, point X. I mean, hide it. Okay. Um, actually, did I did I hide the circumcircle of A B C? Yeah. Okay. So hide it. Okay. So we have that. Also hide this circle which passes through A and C. I don't know what it is. This one. There we go. No, that is the Oh, what's the, that's the wrong one. This one. There we go. Okay, uh, intersect uh, ABC with AEF, those circles. Okay. Sorry. All right. Uh, then uh, A, A, I, E, F, and B, C concur by radical axis theorem. A, I, B, C, and E, F. Okay. Drawing that intersection point. Let's give it a name. All right. Uh, also drawing the uh, 
center of BFEC. Okay. Okay. Then we have that angles K. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. I'm uh, making it look better. We will actually show that uh, J, I, N, K, M, D is cyclic. Okay. All of these line circle. So firstly, uh, angles K, N, J and K, M, J are 90 because of the midpoints. Okay. A bit less trivial is that K, I, J is 90, but that is well known. Okay. K, I, J is 90. So, so far we have the J, I, N, K, and M are concyclic. Um, J, N, K, and M. Uh, I, for I, you're saying it's well known? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, because and, this M in the antipode, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, there is an un another angle trace just to prove that the D, L, I, I, and that uh, J, N, M, D is cyclic. So okay. uh, angle B, M, D, that will be equal to B, C, D plus uh, C, D, M. Okay. And that is uh, B, A, D plus A, B, D. So, so here's where we're using some mediums again, because CDM is BDA, right? Yeah. Okay. And so that proves that, that eventually proves that D lies on the circle. Yeah, basically we just proved that angle BMD is ANE. And that's it. All right. So yeah, this is another easy one. Um, so let, AF meet ABC at I. And then um, it's so by the radical axis theorem, AI, EF, and BC compared to point J. AI, EF. C concur at a point J. And then, so, so first of all, it's well known. So, so I'll say since E, first I'll just say why N lies on AD. So, so EF is anti parallel to BC. That implies N eyes on AD. Okay. And then, uh, so we have angle K and J is equal to angle K. So, so let K be the center of BFEC. So K and J is equal to K and F is 90. And that's obviously equal to angle K and J. And that means that K and J M is cyclic. And doesn't look too good. Let's do it like this. See if this is any better. Um, okay. And then 
Um, so Kij is 90, that's well known. And also, now we want to show angle KBJ. Well, we want to show, I think NKBJ is cyclic. So we want to show, there we go. You've got it all right now. And I will just copy it in. What? It like vanishes. Let me try this. <laughs> you guys see it vanish? Let's do it one. Let's just do this part. I don't know why it does that. It like vanishes <laughs> the, the second I try to put it in. All right, I'll just type it out. Angle J and V is equal to angle MCD plus angle MBC. V, B, which is angle N plus angle ACB. N plus angle AFN, which is angle J and B. Let's see if that all, ooh, it almost, if I drag it down here, it fits on one line, but I'll, I'll split it out. Got it. Let me do this. So, all these together mean that J I N K J I N K M B is cyclic. And what is going on? Oh, I put two dollar signs. Okay, and therefore those three circles can curve point I. So we have ABC, AEF, and BMN concur at I. All right, so we are out of time. Um, unless you guys want to just take a peek at that last problem for five minutes, but um, just because we started a little late, but I think we are, I think we're at a good stopping point. So I'll stop right here. Um, I really like the solution to this first problem. So thanks a lot for coming out with it, Stefan. And I will try to take a look at how to use inversion for, um, for that uh, last problem. So, um, thanks both of you for joining. Um, I feel like the, the number of people that join has been decreasing a little bit, but yeah, we'll see what happens next week. Maybe if I post some more videos, more people come. Um, but for all of you watching on YouTube, if you want to join us in the future, uh, feel free to email me at mgreenb801 at gmail.com. Uh, it's in the description of my video. And we meet every Sunday at 8 a.m. U.S. Central Time. Uh, so thanks again and have a great day.